Welcome. My name is Carla Marc and I am the head of Spanish at the Henry Floyd Grammar School where I teach Spanish and French. Today I'm going to talk about Google Sites. As the title of this webinar suggests, I will be talking about using Google Sites as an ever-growing and communal library of resources, but I will also be showing you and giving you different ideas of other things that you could do with sites and how you could incorporate, incorporate sites into your teaching. I came in contact with Google Sites last year during our last insert day in a very similar day to today, except I was definitely not wearing my unicorn pyjamas. My then head of department wanted us to set some time aside to develop an informative site in which we would be able to deliver first-hand information to our current and prospective students with regards to our subject. This is, I believe, the, more, the most extended use of Google Sites. This is an example of this kind of sites that was created by our lovely ambassadors in my current school. As you can see, it just contains lots of information of what we do in the different case stages in all three languages. It's very informative and it really allows you to share all this information to everyone in school or you can widen this search to anyone that owns that has access to this link. Now we fast forward some months of darkness during the winter and some darker moments of coronavirus later and I found myself thinking about sites again. When the lockdown was finally imposed to us and we had to be more resourceful and develop our online game, I found myself starting the literature topic with my year 12 and I had a moment of inspiration. So I decided to branch out of Google Classroom and into Google Sites as I thought that this could be a very good way of sharing all my resource resources and ensuring that all my students will have access to everything we do in class, especially because they can access this from phones, tablets or computers. Now, before I show you the final product, I'm going to explain to you in under two minutes, I reckon I can do it in one minute and a half if you time it, why I like sites. I'm going to use my trusted Jamboard. Right, one minute and a half. It is very easy to use, it is very intuitive. Google Sites can be up and running in 10 to 15 minutes. It is really compatible with your G Suite and it also supports YouTube. You can upload podcasts, PDF and all matter of online websites that you already know. You just need to embed your links. It allows you to, and most importantly it forces you to have all your resources very well organized and organize them in a logical manner it is very visual and very well organized so it works as some kind of online library so your students know at all times where they can go and find primary secondary sources references powerpoints and in the future when they are studying for the a level or gcc they know where they could find this quality information, especially if they are not as organized. You can own it and share it with your students or you can give them editing rights. This way you can create more of a communal project, which is what I have done. Students really like it and they see the value of this site. And maybe if they're year 12s like mine, they, they see it right now, but next year they are really going to <laughs> feel very glad I made this. Right, I think I have three seconds left. Are you convinced? So allow me to show you what I have done and why I am, I am here today talking about using Google Sites as a ever-growing and communal library of resources. So this is my Google Site. In this Google Site, I have all my PowerPoints, primary, secondary sources. We have projects, essays, articles, videos. We have all sorts of resources together to be able to understand and analyze the literature topic, which for year 12 uh, languages, or sorry, for A-levels languages, it means 
30% of their final grade. So if I just click on it, I will quickly show you how things look like. Maybe not so quickly. There we go. So this is how things look like once you have the you are the owner of the site. Okay. In order to be the owner of the site, you just need to start one site on your folder. So this is my year 12 folder, and this is where I started my site. Very intuitive, very easy to use. So you have insert, so you can add things to your home page. You can add pages. So as I said, pages is this top here when you have just this kind of index. And themes is just if you want to faff a little bit. I have to say, in all the ones I've, I've made, I've always go for the simple one because then you just decorate and you do your own thing. So I wouldn't recommend that you spend lots of time really thinking about your themes. I think pages are more important and then insert. Now, the way I did this, as you can see, the home really doesn't have anything because I just wanted to have everything very well organized. So my index is on before reading the play, during the reading of the play, so we are reading the different acts, then the analysis of the play, writing an essay, and then just some, some more pages, some more interesting stuff. So the way you create a page is very simple. You go to page, you click on new page, and then you just add the name of this new page. So imagine we're doing something on symbolism. I'm just going to click done. And now you can see that it appears right here. Now, if you want to organize it, it's very simple. You just need to drag it to wherever you want. So I want this one on my critical analysis. At the end there, that's fine. So something very simple like that. You can make really, this is your index, so you can go as deep as you want. Imagine that you want to add your page to um, the subtopic, you can. So if you want to add it within the characters, for instance, you can. And you can take it out as well whenever you want. And you can just decide where you want your page to go. And I go to insert, and I just need to choose my layout. So you already know how many resources you're going to upload here. So imagine I'm going to start with one big resource. So let's start with the PowerPoint. Now for the PowerPoint, you can upload it from your own drive. So if you have a, an old PowerPoint style, you can just upload it. You can select something like an image. You can upload it from your drive. YouTube, something from YouTube, which I'm, I'm going to show you in a minute, uh, you can do as well. Something from your calendar, something from a map. So I'm going to choose from Drive because I have this on my Google Slides. Now, the only thing is that on your Drive, it doesn't tell you the, your more recent uh, documents. So you need to go and search your PowerPoint. So I'm going to choose my symbolism. As you can see, I need to find which one I want. These are the old PowerPoints that I then converted into a Google slide. Okay, so I just need to find this one is the one that I want. Then I'm going to click on insert. And here it is your PowerPoint embedded. Okay, I'm just going to write a little title. And then you can just edit text, do a little explanation, write a little explanation here of what you want or what this PowerPoint is about. Now, the way your students are able to see this is because once you upload it here, they have access basically to your resources. Okay. Now, if they were to click here, opening a new tab, that's how they will see your whole PowerPoint in a different tab. Okay, so then here's my PowerPoint and they can have access to it from there. Now imagine you have a lot more in your pages. So I'm going to show you, for instance, how this one looks like. So in this one, as you can see, we have a lot more documents and a lot more slides and uh, things shared. So it's very simple to just create your index here. 
so then your students know what they can have. Okay, and you can decide to hide some of them if you wanted to. I always have it all just here so they know what there is here. Because when you when you are seeing this, this is what you see. And then you just you are able, you cannot do it here, but if you were in the in the viewing mode, they will be able to click and just have direct access. Okay, so imagine I want to talk about before reading the play. So these lessons that you always do in the context and, and just students start to investigate about the context of the play or they start investigating about the historical context of um, whatever country you are studying this play from. So this is my pre-watching kind of lesson so they we watched the play in the theater so we did that first lesson in january this is my lesson one on lorca and a little explanation of what this is going to be lesson two and then this is all the students work on the context so as i said all the students did different kinds of work as you can see, some of them decided to use a PowerPoint type of slide. Some of them just wrote things on a dog. Okay, it didn't matter. I just wanted them to investigate and share their context. So some of them talked about their historical and political context, the role of women, religion, Andalusia, so the, this region in Spain in the, in the 30s, or thinking about love and marriage at the time. Then the only things that they need to do is upload their slide here. Okay, this way I we I was able to see it. The students, other students, were able to see it. Now a little side note: when the students are uploading a resource, it is very important that from their own folder they make it shareable with anyone in the in your school domain basically that way anyone that opens this site which will be also in your school domain will be able to see these documents which ultimately belong to your student okay don't worry if it sounds a bit daunting i promise it's really easy and your students will be able to do it in no time so a way of doing this, or what we did, is they had one lesson to think about their context. They uploaded their documents, and then if I click here, you are able to preview. We are what well, we will be able to see how it looks like. Okay, so we go here. We are able to see the students' work. It takes a while to load because my computer is very old. There we go. So once I had all of this, I gave my students just 30 minutes to look into everyone's work. And then we just had a very quick Q&A. So just students asking questions about each other. And I was, you know, trying to ask questions. So making sure that your students then read each other's work, basically, and that they know where everything is and how easy it is to use. Now, as I said, there's other things that you can include on your site. So you could include articles from the newspaper. So for instance, this is a newspaper article. And the moment you click on it, you are being redirect to, for instance, this is a Spanish newspaper. You can have PDF. So this is a, uh, the book itself that someone very kindly translated from Spanish into English. So you have a parallel write, reading here. And again, when you click on it, students are able to, if it loads, students are able to see what you can do. Okay, so here we have the play, as you can see. So this is always there for reference. And if students, we are very lucky because this play is um, old enough. And also, you know, the author is sadly um, he was murdered. So we have this one for free, should anyone want the play, you know, online rather than buying the book. And then a YouTube, for instance, a YouTube video of just a little summary of the play with Lego. Okay, now what, what if I want to come back to my editing? Very simple. I just go and exit preview. Okay. 
Now, before I do that, this will tell you if you want to see how it will look on a phone, on a tablet, or on a computer, so you know how things look like as you go along, as you create this site. Okay. Now, how can you add other things such as an, an article, for instance? Okay. So, very simple. very very simple you just create you could create a text box or you could just embed something so imagine let me do this one again so control c control v and you choose how you want to view it i always choose this one because i think it gives a level of a, of a title and an explanation and this one is too small to see so then i click on insert and here you have it. Now, you want to write something here. You can click on text box, and the only thing I'm gonna have to do is drag it here. You see, very simple. Now, you can choose whether you want title, heading, subheading, or a just normal text. Now, if you click on title, heading, or subheading, you're going to see that that will make your index change. Okay, so you can see that this one is there twice now because I duplicated here. Okay, right, so I'm just going to click on subheading because I don't think it's very important, it's that important, and I'm just going to write an, an interesting article. Okay, so now I could just write a little, you know, um, okay, so the importance of white in the play. Now, if I want to drag this, it's very simple, as you can see, just drag it wherever you want to have it. So I want to have it here, again, on the articles. Now let me delete that. And that's it. That's how you upload a, an embedded article. Very, very simple. Now, you can, as I said, upload embedded articles. You can upload tech, just write texts or upload images or just anything that you have on your drive. Your table of content is here. And as you can see, I'll do that again. Right now, I've got rid of my index, on my table. When I want it, I just click here and you don't have to do anything immediately because i have i use this as headings as you can see here and i use this as subheadings you can definitely straight away see all this the table of of, of content the content table okay and here are all the other things that you can upload as well or insert so place holder youtube calendar map docs slides sheets forms and charts as well Okay, now I'm going to very quickly show you, for instance, how I have been using this. So these are the three acts as we go along and as we read them, I just upload different things. So this is me, I upload the YouTube, this is how you can upload a YouTube video. So very, very simple. You could just add on YouTube or you could just decide, I decided to go for this one, as you can see, parallel with two kind of documents. And I just decided to upload from YouTube, copy the link and that's it. This is a link to the first act in video. Now, this is my slide of key moments in the first act with a little description of what they are going to see. And after that, I insert this text, which is a summary of the first act. And these are different activities to do with the first act. Now, I uploaded these activities here because then in my Google Classroom, I just write, please complete from site act one, activity one and two, for instance. So my students know that they need to come here. And this another very useful thing is that once you have it on preview, you could just share with them the link and it will bring them straight to this act. 
So you go here and students then answer the questions, etc. And then what I did was to share all the students' work here. I just copied and pasted all the work once I had marked it. So the language, I knew for sure that the language was correct. And I just uploaded all their work here. So themselves, um, this year or next year, when they are studying, they could just come here. Other links, other things that you can do, very simple. You could just copy a link. So as you can see, this is a Quizlet. It's just a, telling me that it's redirecting me. So this is a Quizlet. Quizlet list of all the vocabulary that we have used in the first act. So imagine I copy and paste it. And the way you need to do this is very simple. I'll show you from the beginning. You insert a text box, text box. You choose heading. So here, and then just click there and there and paste and apply. Okay, this button here is your embedded links. So everything that you want to embed in terms of link or insert links, you just need to press on that button over there. And just as simple as that, you can see I've created the same thing. It, it takes seconds to create all of this. And as I go and I teach my different lessons, so the other day we taught lesson act three, and as you can see, I, I stopped here because I wanted to show you this. I embed my video for Act 3 because that's homework. They needed to read the act and watch the video. Now, lesson two days ago, we did this first lesson on the first, second act. So I'm just going to click here. And as I said, you upload from your drive. Now you go to search and you go act. Three. I actually think I wrote it in Spanish. Acto tres, act three. There you go. So I have my act here, and these are several activities and quizzes that we will be doing throughout the act that I will be adding as we go along. So as I did before, here's my act three. So I will just write key moments in this act. I can write a little description of what this act is. So I can talk about the tensions in the play and the, symbol, the symbols that they're going to see so they know that it is there. And just like that, if I want to share this with my students, I only need to go to publish. Now, let me show you what that does. Now, so what happens here is that it's going to tell you everything that you have done so far. So it's telling me that I have added this page called Symbolism, that I have update, updated these other pages, including, as you can see, what I just did in Act 3. OK, so it's telling this is what it currently is there. So you can see there's nothing there. And this is what you want to upload now. Do you agree to publish this? And then you say, yes, of course, publish. And just like that, if you now go to preview, you have this PowerPoint there, and you have this symbolism page that we've made there as well. Right, so this is some of the feedback that I got. The students thought that it was a very good way of revising. They thought, especially for next year, because we are doing the literature in year 12 and between year, year 12 and year 13, it's a whole year of lots of other content. But knowing that it is there gives them peace of mind. They felt that it was, it was very good that we are doing it together. So it felt like this kind of project that we are creating together. So when we carry on doing the symbolism, as I showed you that little lesson, then I will divide the students and they're going to have to create a little presentation of different symbols throughout the play that we will then upload to the site. They really like having access and they really think that it will increase their chance to get a better grade. So accessibility is key, organized resources, and also it's always ever growing so this is something that i think it was perfect 
from sights. It's, it's just how visual it is, how easy it is to have everything in there for you and for your students to see. And everything that you want to have in there, it's important. You know, there's nothing in there that is just in there because. So you can have that as a bridge between you and the students, share everything there, and then they are able to use this site whenever they want from their phone, from their tablet, from their computer. And I really think this will have a very positive impact in the future. So this is how I have been using Google Sites. As first as a kind of informative site, just to give information to students. Secondly, as more something more specific to my unit in literature, as some kind of organized and well-resourced library. And then I thought there has to be more. There has to be more to using Google Sites. And I, I was having a conversation with an ex-colleague and friend of mine, and he said that he thought the same. He started doing the same as I have. And then he just decided, well, why are we only doing this for informative purposes? Why are we not using this for more educative purposes? So this is something that it was his idea, and I just decided to adapt for my year sevens. And it's something such as a little website this is for year seven, and this is just a pet shop for year seven. So in year seven, we do we teach the vocabulary of family and pets. So this is just a student build Google site. Now, this is another way of creating a project. The idea is that this website is going to be a website for all the year sevens. I'm going to show you here very quickly. So in this website, it's just a little pet shop and students are going to have to upload information so it's just a little something different you know it's they're still doing writing work they are still thinking in the language in the target language they're still writing in the target language they're reading in the target language because they need to find the different categories etc but they are not doing it in their books and it's just a different way of marking someone's work isn't it so I have here the different pets that you can find, for instance. So let's go to dogs, los perros. So students here just need to upload a photo of a dog. This is my dog, Napoleon. So I've given them different examples throughout the site. And the only thing that they will have to do, as I said, I will give them access to this and I will using a live lesson I will teach them a little bit how I am teaching you what they need to do I will say okay you need to come here you need to go to insert you need to upload your photograph so you can select your image imagine if you don't want their image they can do it from Google okay so they can choose whatever doc they want to describe Let's do this one because it's cute and then they just imagine that this is i don't know let's put this one a name even and then you just write your description in spanish so this is even he is a medium dog he is white and brown etc i have created this to show you but this is going to be their project next week they need to do two animals throughout the site okay so as you can see, very simple. Your students, you know, do not feel that it's daunting. Your students will be able to do it. I think it's fairly easy to do. If they have any questions, of course, they will come and ask you. But it's fairly easy, fairly intuitive to use. OK, so you can choose, imagine you are the student, you do this one with your dog, and then you want to do, let's do some fish. Okay, so this is, <laughs> I forgot that picture, that's lovely. So this is my fish section. And as well, again, they just need to do exactly the same. So it's very repetitive. So you click on select image, you select it from your computer, from your photos, from your drive, or just from Google. Okay, so whatever fish you want to, it's your clown fish, you want to describe. 
And the same thing again. You put a name to it, you do a description, you give a price, you put your name, you publish. And as simple as that. Now, the good thing is that you can multiply your sites as many times as you want. So if you go back to wherever this site is first located, so let's go to my drive and I just need to click here and make a copy. And I change the name and imagine I want to say group two. And as I, I can carry on doing this for the different groups that I teach, it could be something that I do in groups of five, for instance. It could be something that you do for each class so that you would have 32 students doing this at the same time. Or it could be something that you just do individually. Okay, it could be a project. So I'm planning on using this individually for my year 10s. And for my year 10s, I'm planning on creating a school, my ideal school kind of site. Finish this um, webinar, I'm just going to show you how you can start one. So this is my year 10 folder and we're currently doing my high school. So I just go wherever I want my sites to be. I'm going to click on new, more and Google sites. It takes a while to start, a few seconds, but so I'm happy with this. I'm going to start. I'm just going to give it a title. My ideal school. Fantastic. So if I want to change this, I just need to click on change image. Select image or upload it if you have it from your computer. I never store anything anymore. I just find something from Google. So I go to search and I write school. And let's see if we find anything that we might use. Let's use this one. And I click select and just like that. Now you can use your layouts here or they could straight away write a little text box and just write, this is my idea school. My idea school will have X amount of students, etc. Okay, so you could just write here for your student. Please add here a description of your ideal school. Now, you want to give them other pages to do, so then they could create a different slide for facilities. Facilities is called installations in Spanish, Instala Fitness. And there you go. They could have another one with teachers. Done. And let's have another one for subjects. And just like that, they can write a little description of the school, then a description on what there is and there isn't, the teachers and the subjects. And this could be a one lesson or two lesson kind of project for your whatever year you want to do that they can do individually. And then the only thing they need to do is share this with you. And just to finish, I'm just going to show you how you can share this with anyone. So you go to where your original site is, you double click and you just need to go to share. Do you remember when I was telling you about your students needed to make your their link shareable? This is what they need to do if they want to share this with everyone. So restrict it, say Henry Floyd or anyone with a link. I want people from the Henry Floyd Grammar School to be able to read it. So I click here. If I want absolutely everyone to be able to read it, so imagine this is your uh, informative type of modern languages or geography or history, welcome to history type of site. You want anyone with a link to be able to see it. You can put the link on your school site and then anyone with a link will be able to follow it through. Okay, I want to restrict it to my school. So I just click done. And just like that, when you see these two people, that means it's shared. Now, my student will share it with me. So they just need to click share and find my name. Once they find my name, they click there and they will just write a little note saying, hi, Miss, this is my 
ideal school project send and I will get this straight into my email. Fantastic work today. Thank you very much for listening. Thank you very much for being interested in my webinar. We are done and dusted and I really hope you have learned a few things today about sites, about how you could be inspired perhaps to use sites in different ways through KSH3, KSH4, KSH5. And hopefully your hands are itching now to start your first Google site. If you have any questions, please contact me. This is my contact details, it's CM Ferrer, that's my second surname, at sirhenryfloydgrammarschool.co.uk. So please do contact me if you have any questions, suggestions or feedback. I would be very happy to help you out on absolutely anything, any questions that you might have. Perfecto, muy bien, fantástico. See you. Goodbye. Adios.